there's water in the creek today. You know what that means? It rained last night. It rained quite a bit actually. Um, and we got problems because of that. Um, here you can see there's a ladder trying to fix that light. I can't figure out where the switch is. Can't get power to those lights. Don't know what the deal is. Um, but if we come up here, I tore out the counter where the, uh, the toaster oven was. In the corner. So the counter's gone. It smells, if you're familiar, if you go hiking at all, you know that smell of a rotting log in the woods? That's what this corner smells like. And uh, this thing is leaking. This is wet. This is wet. It's leaking somewhere up there. Um, I see a crack here I didn't notice before. It kind of runs along that layer. Um, so that's just kind of more confirmation that this chimney's probably got to go. But that's the way that it is. Uh, cleaned up this room significantly. It's all vacuumed. All the stuff is gone. The blinds are gone. It's amazing how much difference removing blinds makes in this house. Um, these wood beams are not actually wood beams. They're just decorative. They're quarter inch wood. It's just kind of in place. And the white part is a white backing on insulation. Um, so that's that. We come up over here. Everything seems okay. This morning when I came into the bathroom, we had water dripping from the ceiling, bouncing off of the inside of the light fixture and down the mirror. So my guess is that's probably where the lower section of the roof meets the wall that meets up with the bathroom upstairs. And then uh, in this bedroom, I was just sure that this leak has been fixed, but it has not. This floor is still wet. It's leaking somewhere over here. Um, good news is this is all you can see kind of here. This is mostly brick walls and everything. So a bunch of stuff I could tear out is not damaging the structure over there. Just got to make sure it's not damaging the wood underneath. Um, but I definitely got to finish cleaning up the junk from the house and then start cutting into walls and finding out sources of leaks. This one is in a flatter spot, although it may be something as simple as, uh, well, look at that. We got a spout there. It could be something as simple as these gutters filling up and it leaking back up into the wall. Um, that would be really nice. It's not the way my luck is going, but that would be really nice. Uh, definitely got to clean the gutters, water overflows, just kind of like, even the house is just as bad as that garage gutter is. Um, I went out to the garage, it's dry, so that roof no longer leaks. Um, but it's a much simpler roof than this one. So, you know, more investigating, figure out what's going on. I'm in the crawl space just off of bedroom number four. And all this stuff is up here. There's some insulation falling down, but this little step up is right above the front door. Um, there was a whole row of blueprints here and most of it's all gone because it looks like at some point in time there was bugs. Maybe it was a, at some point in time there was a termite infestant. So it might've been the uh, termites that got to this. I don't know. Um, that box is probably gonna crumble as soon as I try to move it. As you can see, it's full of blueprints though, which is a bummer. But uh, there's a big roll of blueprints right up there. There's a bunch of more paper. Stuff up there doesn't look damaged. So hopefully um, it's either okay or it's strong enough that I can chuck it out the window into the dumpster without having to drag it down the steps. So I have that mostly cleared out. It's just mostly just insulation. There's like an old hat or something up there. It's mostly just insulation and some weird pieces of vinyl. Um, so that stuff can go when I get a dumpster for construction debris. Uh, I got the other side cleaned out um, as well. And I think ultimately the subwoofers will end up in this area firing down into the living room. Um, and you can see the construction of the house. Uh, there's actually a layer of brick outside, which is what you see. And there's these rows that are turned 90 degrees and they come into this block and they kind of, the two layers of block and brick kind of lock together. And uh, I don't know, but the neighbor said that that makes for a really, really strong 
building. So I have no idea though. Um, but the dumpster, last dumpster disappears tomorrow. So I've gotten things pretty cleaned up. Basically at this point, because of space in the dumpster, um, I'm not gonna throw the dump, the dressers and desks into this dumpster. I'm gonna drag them out to the garage and smash them up and they'll go in with the construction debris. But this room is significantly cleaner. Um, the closet, uh, we just got this shelf I can drag outside and disassemble, um, but that's significantly better. The uh, other room over here. Oh shit, I forgot about the mattresses. I gotta take those out tonight. Um, but that can get smashed up. The dress, uh, the bed setup can get uh, smashed up. I just need to drag the mattresses outside. Um, and the blue room is significantly better. This top step is getting worse as I walk on it. Um, I think it just kind of rotted with no use. Uh, so same thing with this furniture, it can get smashed up um, and go into the construction debris dumpster. Um, the cardboard, I'm just gonna cut up and it'll go in the regular recycling. I found some extra glass, I don't know what that's for, but this room is so much better um now that's mostly empty uh i still have tonight i need to take out all the clothes from this room and there's a few things that can go in this dumpster other than clothes but for the most part it's just clothes and that can be used to top off the dumpster um and the other day when it was raining uh, we had the leaks in the morning and i discovered that this switch turns on and off that light only when it's raining. So uh, all these light switches are the original switches from 1951. So I ordered a couple cases of switches and that'll be on the task this week is to go through the house and replace all of the light switches with something brand new. And hopefully that'll solve this weird problem and uh, maybe it'll get some other lights working. I figured I had two options to get rid of these mattresses. And going out the window is the easier one. Two more to go. So I've just finished up this room. Um, it looks significantly better. Um, turns out that glass doesn't fit the window like I thought. Uh, so far, there's, I found lots of panes of glass sitting around here and they don't fit anything. Um, I wonder if the, maybe they were for picture frames or something. Uh, no idea. But if you come over here, we look at this. There's some damage up here. So even if I wanted, I can't avoid tearing up the roof or the ceiling of the room. There's some cracks and stuff. Um, there's also some stuff falling down here. Um, this window is broken, which I thought. Um, and there's this um, opens. Well, it did once at least. And uh, it goes straight through to there. So anything from nature can come right up through this window and into the house. Um, once we take that off. Um, and that window opens. This one does not. Uh, that one does not. Um, the crank is broken. So uh, definitely this corner of the house needs attention. I was going to tear apart this room anyway down to the studs. Um, I suspect that just like upstairs, this is actually only a half inch or so before you hit the block wall. But uh, I don't actually know. I'll find out. Uh, we'll find out together in a couple weeks, I guess. Um, and I think because of this condition of this stuff up here and the way these windows are, um, I was gonna wait to do the windows in this house until much later, but I think maybe it's best to do them as I do the bedrooms. And so I think maybe uh, have a company come out, measure everything, and then just buy these windows one by one and have them installed as I do the rooms. And then I can get um, modern window AC units until the house gets converted over to HVAC. Um, so as I discovered a couple days ago, this is the switch for the outdoor light, but it doesn't actually do anything unless it's raining, which is frightening. Um, so I have bought an entire box, or I've bought several boxes of switches to replace all the switches in this house since they're all basically 70 years old. Um, so that's what I'm doing tonight is I'm gonna start on that project. And everywhere that I find wire nuts, uh, I despise them. So I'm going to replace them with these. They're uh, Wagos. And there's two different types of Wagos. There's the type where you just stick the wire in and it just kind of um, 
kind of like a Venus flytrap, just snags the wire, doesn't let it back out. These are lever nuts. So you pop the wire in and you flip the lever down and it locks on the nut. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do with these and hopefully I can make this switch work properly. So this is the switch for the light there. Clearly it's disconnected, but that is still on. It's not a three-way switch. So something is still going on up here and uh, I guess I gotta dig deeper. All right, all the new switches are in. This actually works as expected, but basically it's wired as if it was a three-way. The red wire is what's called a traveler and it jumps from switch to switch so that you can have multiple switches controlling one light. Um, that means that somewhere is another switch and I don't know where it is and I don't know uh, what's going on with it, but it's gotta be near water because the weather seems to affect whether it's working or not. Um, so that'll be a task is to figure out where that switch is. It may be by the back door. Hmm. There's some other, there's a, there's a light on the side of the house. It may be running off of that switch as well. Um, either way, what I did for now is I capped off the traveler and I'm just running, uh, it's just on this end, it's wired as just a regular light. If I can find the other switch, I'll do the same thing. I'll cap off the traveler. Um, and I'll basically I'll cap off everything going to this fixture and then this light will just work off of the switch and uh, the other light will be different, all isolated from itself. So we'll see what happens. All right, so it's Sunday. I've started moving my stuff into the house. We're in the garage right now. Um, this rack is of stuff that's currently not being used. It'll all eventually end up in the uh, IT room. Uh, we got a monitor up there, um, power strips. Uh, I'm not using this anymore. It'll be my travel router. Um, it's unmanaged switch. Couple amps that'll end up back in the bedroom where they used to be. Um, these here are quad core AMDs. They're super low powered. They run off of a 25 watt power brick that's inside of each of them. And uh, their sole purpose in life is to be radar and sonar machines. These two are freshly built AMD 3600Xs with uh, the cheapest video card I could throw in them and they run handbrake. Um, these two are not built yet. Um, they're gonna eventually be backup file servers. They'll pull backups from the main computer. Um, we have over here, this giant box is actually for the hard top on the Miata. It, uh, I just bought it a few months ago. Uh, Mazda ended production on them and a company in Europe bought all of Mazda's stock. So I bought a new one from them while they were still available. We got a couple of new old stock fenders for the Bronco. Um, pile of tools. Uh, toolboxes, um, door for the racks and more toolboxes and stuff. I've already put these up on Craigslist to see if someone will just come take them for scrap metal. Uh, we go into the other room. The previous owner has come and retrieved some of their stuff. Uh, so there's no more of their stuff left out here in the garage. Um, basically, what I'm going to end up doing this coming week is I can start a demo out here. And so the idea would be to move all the tool, clean this up enough to move all the tools and whatnot from the other room into here. And then I can demo the other room and uh, everything won't get covered in dust. I can also, um, before I do that, I'll sweep up there. Um, and uh, then um, I can drape cloths over everything and demo these walls um, after moving the tools back over there. And um, 
instead of getting a dumpster and having it sit here for weeks while I do demo, I'm just gonna pile everything on this side of the room. And then once there's enough to fill a dumpster, I'll order one and then wheelbarrow it all up to the, to the uh, dumpster. And uh, I didn't measure this room finally. It's uh, 30 by 32, so it's 960 square feet. So it's pretty close with my guess of a thousand. All right, I'm up on the roof. I came up on that ladder right up there and then it kind of hopped up on. Uh, I briefly thought about climbing around the end of the chimney, but uh, I decided it's probably best to only do that when I have a harness on. Um, that vent, I think, is the source of the leak in the peak bathroom. And this siding may or may not be the source of that as well. Uh, there's some dark spots on the roof over the other side above the leak in the bedroom. So uh, I think that's just a whole section of bad uh, shingles. Um, in the meantime, I'm cleaning the gutters. Almost done with this one. Um, it's not that bad of a task. Uh, just kind of yucky down there. Definitely wash my hands afterwards. But not a bad view of the place from up here. Uh, so this is the last project of the week. I'm replacing the fluorescent lights in front of the front window with LEDs. Uh, and I'm not doing just LED tubes that plug right into the fluorescent. I'm, uh, I'm replacing the entire fixtures. Anytime you can, you want to remove these things uh, as carefully as you can. Uh, you don't want to smash the fluorescent tubes. Those have mercury in them. Um, but even just the fixtures and stuff, if you can take it down peacefully, do so. But sometimes you just have to get out a big fucking hammer. And hope you can smash this thing out of here. And that applies to not just light fixtures, but everything in the house. Anything, anything you want to remove, it generally goes much easier if you can just unscrew it properly. So I found, when I removed the entertainment center, I found some uh, spotlights back here behind this uh, little wood um, facade thing. And uh, so I'm adding them onto the end of this. They were just kind of plugged into the wall with a switch on the cord. So I'm adding them onto the end of these lights. I've got one installed. Um, I'm using the uh, lever nut wagos to uh, connect them, and then it will turn. They'll turn on with the uh, main light switch at the front door. These lights install pretty simply. There's a simple bracket that holds it up to the ceiling. I'm following this old dirt line to make a straight line. All right, so the lights are in three tubes. Uh, everything turns on just like it's supposed to with one flip of the switch. Uh, all right, it's Sunday evening. Uh, I've got my stuff moved into the room now. Significantly more organized than the stuff that was here before. Um, I've moved a bunch, and one of the things I learned over time is that boxes the same size will help you tremendously. But even more than that, you'll see that every single one of these boxes has a number written on it. That number is in a spreadsheet, and the contents of each box is in that spreadsheet. So when I moved, moved the stuff in today... One of the first things I wanted to find was my hoodies. I just did a find in the spreadsheet for hoodies and I was able to open up box number 88 and bam, my hoodies were in there. Um, things are generally organized. This is mostly kitchen stuff. Um, a few things here and there. This uh, um, desk is going to go up to the IT room. I got some home theater gear. Um, you can see some giant 24-inch subwoofers there. I'll put, I think I'll put those in the crawl space upstairs down firing in the living room so they're nice and hidden but they're uh, very effective. That... It's hard to see in the dark, but this there's a rack here of just theater gear, amplifiers and processors and whatnot. Um, but this is pretty much the bulk of everything I own. It fits, it fits into uh, one 16-foot truck. Um, so this house, once I actually get the stuff in place and stuff, the house will look pretty empty. Um, but that's it for the week. Uh, I, didn't, I don't feel like I got a lot done this week. But I did end up actually spending about 15 hours, 16 hours or so working on the house. I'm going to start demo next week, so that should be fun. i going to swing some uh, big hammers around and tear some stuff out, cut some stuff up. Um, yeah, and just uh, have at it.